so dear ladies and gentlemen participants of our energy forum 2021 the ninth energy forum in a row uh, on this festive occasion i have the honor to introduce miss kadri simpson uh, the european union commissioner for energy and representative of estonia in this in this very important and, and honorable position who will give us a short introductory speech and, and a welcome address to our today's event. Dear Ms. Kadri Simpson, the floor is yours. Very good. Uh, well, I was starting with thanking uh, the organizers and, uh, and also I would like to extend my thanks uh, to all of you for tuning in for the forum this morning. And I, I would like to share with you a few messages about uh, the importance of uh, energy operation in the Baltic region and uh, point out uh, some of the success stories uh, which have helped to ensure energy security and to accelerate the clean energy transition. I will also uh, dive into three issues of particular relevance in the context of the EU policies. First, uh, the central role of renewables and efficiency for the Green Deal. Second, um, the need to promote the digitalization of the energy sector while and this will be my third point, ensuring security, notably cybersecurity. Let me start by pointing to the Baltic Sea region as a front runner in cross-border cooperation to achieve um, energy policy objectives. Under the framework of the high-level group of the Baltic Energy Market Interconnection Plan, or PEMIP as we know it, regional cooperation has uh, helped the three Baltic states become one, on, one of the most uh, interconnected regions in Europe. Key energy infrastructure projects have been developed over years in gas. The Baltic States and Finland are creating a truly regional gas market. The Commission is impressed by all the efforts made by the involved parties up until now. And this common regional gas market would be the first EU cross-border gas market merger that uh, reaches across four countries. It would uh, reinforce the security of supply in in this region that is uh, strongly dependent on imported gas, as well as uh, increased market liquidity and fossil competition to the benefit of consumers. The EU, and in particular the Baltic region, uh, is well prepared to guarantee continuous gas supplies in all circumstances, also in times of crisis. Uh, regional cooperation is a pillar of our security of supply by engaging in common risk analysis, coordinated pre preventive um, and risk mitigation measures, and optimizing uh, the benefits of coordination for the entire internal gas market. New gas infrastructures in the region, such as um, the Baltic Connector since 2019, and gas interconnection Poland Lithuania, Kipl, due by end of um, this year, are improving uh, the resilience of the region to gas supply disruptions. And I'm also aware of the joint efforts of the administrations of uh, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, and Finland, who are working together on a blueprint for bilateral solidarity arrangement under the security of supply regulation. I hope uh, for a swift finalization of these procedures so that um, the arrangements uh, can be signed without uh, delay. Market integration uh, in the region could further support the transformation of the gas market and help meet our strengthened energy and climate objectives, both for 2030 and 2050, uh, including the deployment of renewable and decarbonized gases, in particular biomethane, which has a growing potential in the region. Also, new types of threats, such as cyber and hybrid, are posing an increasing challenge to energy security and cooperation. And uh, it is um, utmost important uh, to prevent, prepare for, and mitigate energy crisis. And I'm therefore very glad to see that before the summer, almost all member states shared and discussed their draft risk preparedness plans for, this, for the electricity sector learning from each other and uh, looking for synergies to be more efficient and, uh, and effective. And I look forward to the final plans due in January 
and how the new coordination mechanism is implemented. And it requires member states cooperate and offer assistance to each other uh, in a spirit of uh, solidarity. And last but not least, energy security and the energy transition at large is uh, what drives the project of synchroni synchronizing the three Baltic states with the continental European network by 2025. And this flagship project um, of the region and of the European Union as a whole stands for solidarity, trust and cooperation between uh, three Baltic states and Poland. And it allows uh, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia to plan and operate their energy systems independently from Moscow. And um, the synchronization of the Baltic states remains a strategic priority for the Commission and requires all member states involved to continue with uh, joint solutions on all issues impacting its successful completion. Um, beyond the region, there is certainly a lot going on at the EU level. The European Green Deal, and in particular, Commission's proposals from 14th of July, also called Fit for 55 package, outlines uh, the legislative process to achieve our increased climate ambitions. And we need to reduce emissions by 55% by 2030 and ultimately achieve climate neutrality by 2050. And it will also deliver on other policy objectives, including increasing our energy independence, um, greater use of local onshore and offshore renewable energy sources, as well reducing energy use through energy efficiency will help reduce our continued dependence on imports. The Green Deal also offers great opportunities in the context of economic recovery. It will boost jobs, growth, and the competitiveness of EU industries. And with high ambition, our imports of fossil fuels are projected to decrease significantly. Under the 55% scenarios set out in EU's climate target plan, the volume of fossil fuel imports will fall on average by 27% by 2030. This includes coal down by 71 to 77%, natural gas by 13 to 19%, and oil by 25%. And beyond 2030, fossil fuel imports drop further and even more dramatically. Our projections uh, show that the cost of energy imports falls to 0.6% of GDP in 2050 compared to 2% under the baseline scenario. And cumulatively, this adds up to 3 trillion euros less paid for imports. So greenhouse gas reductions will also affect the way electricity is produced with um, implications for the security of electricity supply. And uh, in particular, the variability of electricity production through wind and sun requires a more flexible electricity market. And this is highlighted in the EU strategy for offshore renewable energy and oper operationalized uh, in the Commission proposals for a revised Trans European Energy Networks regulation. A strong and robust uh, grid is needed to ensure that electricity flows to where it is most needed and storage solutions complemented by elect electrolyzers and more flexible demand will also facilitate um, the decarbonization of the energy system, in particular uh, through renewable energy. And finally, the EU power system will become increasingly important for the EU economy due to the electrification of final demand and uh, will also become increasingly decentralized uh, and interconnected and relying on digitalization. And indeed, let me take the opportunity to say a few more words about digitalization. Digitalization offers a wealth of opportunities for the energy sector, a more efficient management of energy networks, data-driven energy services, integration of distributed renewables in the grid, and increased participation of energy consumers in the energy transition. This is um, just to name a few, but it brings with it a lot of important challenges. Interoperability, access to data, cybersecurity, 
and energy consumption of ICT. And we need to keep on uh, developing and investing in this. Digitalization is a very fast evolving area that requires constant adaptation by stakeholders in the whole energy supply chain. <coughs> and to support this adaptation, we are working on action plan on digitalization of the energy sector, where we will lay out uh, our view on how to support it. And the action plan aims at pushing the uptake of digital technologies in the energy sector and use them to transform energy markets to energy services markets in a cyber secure way. And it will also further address the energy consumption of ICT. And we have already invested around 1 billion euro to support research and innovation in smart grids in Horizon 2020. In 2018, 19 and 2020, we invested 100 million euros to specifically support the development and application of digital technologies in the energy system. And the upcoming action plan will build on the um, Commission's BREACH initiative, which unites smart grid, energy storage, islands and digitalization projects. And the Baltic Sea region countries are front runners in smart grid digitalization, 30 of the breach projects, um, projects demonstration or pilot sites are in Baltic countries. And the digitalization connects uh, the objectives of the European Green Deal and the digital age. It is an integral part of the energy transition and an enabler for decarbonization bringing new business opportunities and strengthening our technological leadership and, and strategic autonomy and uh, thus um, stimulating growth and jobs. Uh, at the same time, digitalization also brings new challenges for the energy sector, in particular on cybersecurity. And this is the third topic that I wanted to cover this morning. Energy is the um, most critical infrastructure as other infrastructures depend upon it. And without energy, nothing works. So recent global cyber attacks have demonstrated that a particular focus on cybersecurity is um, required in energy security. Cyber incidents in energy can have drastic impacts on security of energy supply. These uh, cascading effects on other vital se sectors for society and, and the whole economy. And the energy sector has particularities uh, that create specific challenges and require specific cybersecurity solutions. Um, well, notably, real time requirements, um, also cascading effects, and the mix of legacy technologies with smart uh, state of the art technology. And in December 2020, the Commission and the High Representative presented a new cybersecurity package aimed at facilitating and securing the digital transition in the next decade by outlining, outlining concrete policy, uh, funding and regulatory initiatives, and building on the horizontal cybersecurity framework, we're currently working on a rule book uh, for uh, network operators for cross-border electricity flows to, to, be, to be adopted in 2022. And in addition, the Commission is exploring with member states and relevant stakeholders possible additional actions for critical energy infrastructure beyond cross-border electricity, including oil and gas. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope this has given you a broad outline of some of today's themes from the perspective that do we see them uh, in the European Commission. And let me close by congratulating you again on the excellent work that you are doing in forging cooperation between the countries in the region and, uh, and public and private sectors. And I hope uh, the contributions from, uh, from today's experts um, will help you to take these partnerships further. Uh, so enjoy the discussions and thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Simpson, and thank you, and of course, the European Union as a whole for continuous support on, on the projects in the region and uh, 
and of course help in financing of them and uh, without the European Union support obviously most of the projects would not be even possible so uh, really much appreciated and thank you very much for finding that your precious time to join us here and congratulate us uh, during this uh, new type of uh, energy forum project uh, in our region thank you much mm -hmm.